Hi there, now that we know the parts of an equation, let's talk about how to solve one-step equations. So I'm on page 22 in your binder. And we always have to ask ourselves, what is the goal of solving an equation? And the goal is to get the variable, which is the letter, by itself. Another way you can say that is to isolate the variable. So in order to do this, we need to perform the inverse operation. So we're going to use the inverse properties that we learned about when we talked about properties. So the inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of subtraction is addition. The inverse of multiplication is division. And the inverse of division is multiplication. Those are easy. All right. <coughs> Let's look at some examples. So anytime we solve an equation, I always like to draw a line down the equal sign so that we separate both sides of the equal sign. We need to get the letter by itself. But we have this positive 14 stuck with it. Well, the opposite of plus 14 or positive 14 is minus 14 or negative 14. So I, if I subtract 14 on from one side, I need to subtract it from the other side as well because what I do to one side, I must do to the other side to keep the equation balanced. So when I do that, this cancels and becomes zero, so I can cancel that. I'm left with B on the first side and 27 minus 14 is going to give me 13. Now because B is just a plain B, my final answer is going to be B equals 13. Now, whenever you solve an equation, there should be no reason that you should ever get it wrong because you can go back in and you can check your work and you're going to be expected to do that on your test. So what I would like you to do is we are going to rewrite the problem the same way that it was. So b plus 14 equals 27. And we're going to substitute in our 13 because that's what b equaled. So instead of b, we're going to write 13 plus 14 equals 27. And if I do 13 plus 14, that does give me 27. So 27 is equal to 27. This right here is your reflexive property. 27 is equal to 27. That's true. So I got it right. This here is my final answer that I write on my test. Not my check step answer. My answer here with the letter equals the number. You need to circle the whole thing because B equals 13 is actually the answer. All right, let's look at number two together. If we look at number two, it's backwards, and that's okay. No big deal. The W is on the opposite side. Remember here, minus minus over parentheses can become a plus, as long as there's nothing else in there. So really, we have negative 5 equals W plus 4. This is a positive 4 term. The opposite, to get it away from this W, is going to be minus 4 or negative 4 and I have to do it to both sides to keep it balanced. These cancel because they become zero. Negative five minus four gives me negative nine is equal to W left on this side. There's my answer. Now I wanna check it, so I'm gonna rewrite the problem the way it's given to me. And actually, I know this is a plus four, so I'm just gonna write plus four instead instead of minus negative four. Plug in where W is, do that substitution. So we have negative nine plus four, and then negative nine plus four does give me negative five. So that gives me that reflexive property right there. That's true, so I got it right. So my final answer I'd write on my test is negative nine equals W. Now don't switch this around to put the W in front. Negative nine equals W is fine for your answer. Let's look at the next part. So 
So if we look at number three, if I draw my line down the middle, I have a squished seven times S. And you need to think to yourself, what does squished mean? Well, it means multiply. What's the inverse of multiply? Division. I'm actually going to use a fraction bar to show my division. Divide by seven on both sides. Seven divided by seven equals one. So I'm just left with S. You don't need to put the one with it. Equals 56 divided by seven gives me eight. So there's my answer. Always remember to do this top to bottom part here. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that we see. So now if we do our check, 7s equals 56. Remember that this is multiply. That's a big mistake that a lot of you made on your order of operations test. You wrote it, you just squeezed in the number and say we squeezed in 8. You said it was 78, not 7 times 8. So make sure you're careful with that. Equals 56. 7 times 8 is 56, so that is a true reflexive property. So that means S equals 8 is the correct answer. All right. Now, this one is scary. Oh my gosh, it has a fraction in it. But it's really not that difficult. When I look here, the 6 is stuck with the R by a division bar. Fractions mean division. The inverse of, a di of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 6 on both sides, in this case, to cancel it and do the opposite. So I'm left with r is equal to 3 times 6 gives you 18. There's my answer. Now I can check it. So I have r over 6 equals 3. Substitute 18 for r. 18 divided by 6 equals 3. If I solve 18 divided by 6, I do get 3. So my reflexive property is correct. The next one we're going to look at, it has this fraction here, but it's squished out in front of the letter. Now, this is where things can get a little bit tricky, but you can use your rules for fractions to help you with solving this one. This here is a multiply. But I need to divide to get it away, but I don't like to divide fractions, and we know that from our fractions unit. We need to do the keep switch flip. So we keep this first fraction, we switch to multiply, and then we're going to flip it over times 2 over 1. When we do that, it's going to cancel. Okay, so you multiply and flip, and you can do the same thing over here, 2 over 1. I'm left with C equals, if you go across the top and across the bottom, 12 times 2 gives you 24 over 1, and 24 divided by 1 is just 24. So I get C equals 24. You can check it, 1 half, and then we have C Then you can plug in 1 half times 24 equals 12. And just go ahead and type that all in your calculator. 1 divided by 2 times 24 will give you 12. So you get that reflexive property, and that is true. Be careful with number 6. In number 6, we have a negative 3. So I think most of you are probably thinking, oh, we add 3 to both sides. However, do you see how this is squished here? That is telling you multiplication. So in this case, instead of adding 3, you're really dividing to get it away because there's multiplication there. So we're going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. It cancels the 3 over there, where it shows up twice. 9 divided by negative 3 gives us negative 3 is equal to, and w is left on this side. If we check our work, we have 9 is equal to negative 3 w. Please remember this is multiply here. Don't just squish the numbers together. Negative 3 times negative 3. It's always helpful to plug in with parentheses. 
and I'm left with negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, so I get that true reflexive property. Now, if you need to go over any of these, watch them over again, and when you're ready, go on to page 23 in your binder, and you can do the practice problems. Whenever you are done with page 23 or you would like some of them checked, please raise your hand and I would be happy to help you.